back to the You Can Do Both podcast. This is Ashley. I'm Court. And we're back for our second episode. We're so happy to be here. Round two. Round two. We really hope you guys enjoyed. If you listened, thank you so much. I can't express my gratitude and appreciation enough. We were so excited and we got the most positive and kind feedback. Absolutely. And we dropped the first episode literally on other sides of the country. I'm so sorry, Ash. Yeah, Courtney could not make it any more chaotic. (laughs) So not only did we have a three-hour time zone, but like we're both in the middle of a work day. Yeah, I woke up at honestly 6 a.m. or 7 a.m. my time, which was 9 or 10 a.m. your time. Mm -hmm. We're like, okay, so today's the day. Yep. We received, or I res- I woke up to the cover art that morning. Yes. <laughs> We're like, okay. <laughs> so we didn't have like the finalized cover art yet. Yeah. It kind of all just fell into place though. Yeah. I had meetings all morning in between. We'd have a quick FaceTime. Yes. And we did it. Very um, nonchalant. We're like, oh my God, uh, I think it's up. <laughs> I guess that means we should promote it now. It's up. <laughs> yeah, we probably should have had some type of game plan. We kind of just dropped it yeah. on you guys. Yeah. Um, but but yeah. we did it. We did. And I'm honestly shook by just like the positivity and the constructive feedback we got. Like we had no expectations going into it. None. And Ash and I like don't even know how to work Anchor. I mean, we do now, but we didn't. Kind of. We didn't know how. Still navigating. Still working. Still mm-hmm. working through it. But we didn't know how to access the analytics of it to see like who's listening or like how many people, whatever it is. And she calls me like midday and is probably up for like probably six hours at this point. Yeah. And we're like, okay, like let's check the analytics. And it said 14 people had listened. And we were like, let's let's go. Let's go. 14 (laughs) people listen. Knowing that was me, Courtney, my mom, (laughs) my boyfriend. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> come to find out the following day I guess Spotify just took a little bit more time to really mm-hmm. integrate and and allow us to see the analytics and we had over 200 listeners yeah over 200 like my heart is so full and happy that is just chills all over my body honestly Ugh. and to think that that's only the beginning like that was not not an actual episode that was more just so an intro. intro to like who we are why we're doing it and what we're excited about but today is going to be the first real ep- episode, so I'm super excited to get into it. Yeah, me too, me too. So again, thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you for your support. It literally means the world to us, and bear with us as we figure out how yeah. this whole thing works, but thank you. Yes, and it just got us even more excited to continue this, and like, yes. holy, like we literally, I just got back from LA, and... I just walked into Ash's apartment. I mean, I got back last night, mind you. But I walked in and I was like, hey, co-host. We, you, if you guys could see this setup in my room right now, like we moved my furniture into from the living room into my room. We have like a ring light here. Our phones are on tripods to hopefully get some content. It is it's something else. It's a show. How was your week in LA? Let's do a little catch up. Okay, yes. So if you remember from our focuses of the week, I had quite the the week ahead of me going to Austin, Texas first for one of my best friend's birthdays and then LA for work. Um, so it was quite a jam-packed week. It started off with the rocky start, I would say. Um, I decided to go to Texas for the first time to escape the Boston winter Meanwhile, there was an ice storm in all of Texas. <laughs> a huge like, ice storm like, that are, was shutting down everything. Are you kidding me? <laughs> like, that is the weekend. I mean, granted, I didn't decide the weekend, but that just would happen. Um, so I got to Texas. I got to Dallas. I ended up running into a childhood friend that was on my same connecting flight. And we just had no idea we were going to be on the same flight. So that was, like, super special. Um, and then it worked out because that flight got canceled. So... We bunked up in a hotel room together. We got stranded in Dallas. Fucking insane. We could make it explicit. Forking insane. (laughs) Maybe we could do like the beeps. Could we add the beeps? That'd be so funny. (laughs) That would be perfect. I mean, to ask you that, yeah, is this going to be an explicit um, podcast or clean? 
Do we have to be consistent? I don't no, know how that I, works. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Okay. But I'll try not to curse. This is going to really help me because sometimes there's just a little bit too much of vul- vulgarity in my vocabulary. It and goes in waves. Yeah, we can, we can ebbs and flows. We can die it down, though. <laughs> yes, for sure. <laughs> but sorry, what I wanted to say was if you guys missed, um, Court took everyone along I on did. this travel journey, and it was literally the funniest stories I've ever seen. Just <laughs> Everything you could possibly think of went wrong, yeah. and she's just stranded at the airport. So maybe you should create a highlight from that because I, honestly, that was so funny. I honestly should, and I just love the power of social media. Like, I just decided to just like and try to create like a funny or just positive yeah. experience from positive all the twist. misfortunes. And I was so vulnerable and like very evidently myself and that shined through and people were like sliding in like oh my gosh I actually have family that lives in Dallas like you can definitely stay with me like this that whatever and it's like holy moly you forget that like how far your posts can reach yeah and so it was super special and it just like inspired me to continue to post and be more vulnerable because you never know like what's going to come from it 100 percent. but long story short I suffered some travel trauma from canceled flights delayed flights it was an absolute mess, um, but I met some really cool people through it. Like You met so many people. Like I said, I was trying to turn it into a positive experience. So like when I was in a three-hour customer service line, I would just turn to the people next to me and be like, so what's your travel story? Why are you here right now? I actually love that question. Yeah. Like next time I travel, I want to use that. I just feel like it's so fun to interact with the people around you. I met so many people, people in Tampa, Florida, people in San Diego, and like now I if I ever visit these places like I have people and now we're friends through Instagram and like we're hyping each other up and we're like did you make it to your final destination (laughs) like like just so fun so that was that had a great time in Austin um maybe too fun of a time because I need to go back so I can no such thing fully experience it like in every which sense it's such a cool city and it's a melting pot because Everyone that's living there right now is from all over the country. Mm. Like, cause it's just such a de- desirable place for people in their 20s. Yeah, I feel like everyone's moving there. Yeah, and it's a great city. Like, you have to, like, it has everything that you would need in a city. It has, like, nature components. It has, like, a downtown. Everyone's super young and fun. And honestly, I, I considered moving there. But, yeah, so bottom line, great time in Austin. Ended up making it to California and I just love my job I was there for work I got to meet a bunch of cool people I've been building relationships and building up this network of small business owners virtually kind of all across the country for my job and the main concentration right now is LA so we had a co-collaboration with uh, an owner of a restaurant out there celebrating the Chinese New Year and I finally got to meet people that I've been building relationships with for the past three months Um, and I just left feeling absolutely inspired I so love that. I'm I'm back. That's how kind of my past week has gone. I'm just very ready to just get all of my projects up and running. I feel like being surrounded by entrepreneurs and creatives is just like the best thing you could do. I mean, your net work is your net worth. And Ooh, I know back the with quotes. the cliche quotes, you're going <laughs> to we established that that's what I'm here for. I love it. Um. But it just got me super excited for life in this podcast that we're building and all that's to come. Yeah, no, it looked like so much fun. I was was living through everything. I literally had to write down on my agenda today, like post Instagrams because I have so many. I have so many like photos and just content in general to go through. And if I don't post it, I'm never going to. But it's too good not to share. Yeah, you have to share. So keep keep up. Stay tuned. Um, But how was your week, Ash? My I week missed was you. good. I know I miss you too. My weekend was not as eventful last weekend. I had deployment on Friday night and nobody tells you everyone glamorizes working in tech and you get to work from home and it's kind of so lax, but they don't tell you about the 10 p.m. deployments on a Friday night. <laughs> so I spent my Friday night with my manager for two hours on a, on a WebEx. And then this past weekend, I saw Girl With No Job at Foxwoods Casino. So for our other podcast listeners out there, you may or may not know of the Morning Toast. Court, I don't think you listen, do you? I had a phase where I listened a lot, but no, I'm not a religious listener. Okay, well, I am. My friend Gab introduced me to it. So we went to go see her. One of them is a stand-up comedian. Her name's Claudia, and she's so funny. So we did a little GNL at Foxwoods. Saw her. It was fabulous. 
And something cool, Court, I already told you this, but we met this girl that sat in front of us um, that came to the show. And she was there alone, and she we just started chit-chatting. And she was like, yeah, my boyfriend and I came up for Valentine's Day weekend. We're staying at Foxwoods Casino. And I was, you know, kind of looking around. I was like, where's the boyfriend? And she's <laughs> like, oh, like, I'm just, I'm just here by myself. Like, I just told him. I was like, oh, my God, I love this girl. I listen to their podcast. I absolutely want to go. And she basically took herself out on a little date night. Even yeah, she on, should. Yeah, even on a romantic getaway, you know? And that was just so That's inspiring. Some boss energy right there. Yeah. I was like, damn, I want to take myself out on a date like that. Yeah. That's her confidence in her relationship, too. Like, she must have a powerhouse relationship. If Absolutely. Her boyfriend also feels comfortable. Oh, he probably loved it, to be honest. He could go gamble in the casino by himself, yeah. do his thing. But like, such a healthy balance. Yeah. I was like, you can do both. <laughs> <laughs> is she gonna be a new listener so we kind of messed up so her name is Paige she's from Long Island Paige from Long Island if, if you you're listening somehow get to this podcast hi we loved you <laughs> but we were supposed to meet up for a drink after and she was like okay I'll meet you guys right back here and then they weren't letting any more people in so like Gab and I ventured off somewhere else gotcha. so we didn't end up rekindling but her name's Paige from Long Island and if we it, love you if it was meant to be you'll cross paths again yeah I think we will and that that's so cool like imagine having a podcast and building up a community so much to the point where you have like a traveling road show and you're able to connect with your listeners in real life that's the coolest thing and then obviously all the listeners they're like-minded people themselves that they're con- into consuming the same content yeah so loved that and then by the time you guys are listening, so we're recording on Super Bowl Sunday. Yes, we are. Tomorrow's Valentine's Day. I went to dinner at this place called Uni, I think. It's U-N-I. For anyone in Boston, it's a fabulous, not as well-known spot sushi place. So good. Literally better than Zuma, which was my original favorite sushi place. No, your stories looked fire. Yeah, it was I, so good. And it was such like a an under popular or like i hadn't heard of it it was a low-key spot yeah i thought so the place was packed though and it was like moody vibey intimate so perfect that's the exact valentine's day vibe i would be going for if i were in a relationship or had a valentine (laughs) yeah so highly recommend that that's amazing well should we hop into kind of housekeeping items first yeah so we never really talked about this on our first episode, but our release schedule. Yes. So we plan on really keeping you guys along for the ride. And with that, we want to be consistent. So we plan on dropping a new episode every Thursday um, and we'll record like obviously in the meantime, but definitely stay tuned. Thursdays will be our designated drop days um, and hopefully we can keep up with that with our lives and schedules. Yeah. But Either way, we'll keep you in the loop. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so Thursdays. Thursdays are a good day. You can stay in on a Thursday. You can go out on a Thursday. You can do both on a Thursday. You can do both <laughs> on a Thursday. So good vibes. Yes, it's Friday Eve. It's just like something to look forward to to really get you get you over that hump to your Friday and your weekend. Absolutely. Um, okay, so topic for today. We are introducing a new series. So for now, the title's going to be... <laughs> let's talk both so let's talk both and basically we're gonna pick a topic and kind of how we find the balance between the two yes so we're gonna pick a specific area of our life or like a category or maybe we'll look to you to kind of decide what the topic should be and then how it's gonna work is we're gonna talk about the two extremes in that it just generally kind of like mm-hmm. what we see from other people and how people like interact or operate in that area of their life. Then we're going to get into our own perspectives on it and kind of how we live our lives. And it'll give you a sense of kind of where we fall on the spectrum of these two extremes. Mm-hmm. And then we're going to get into some tips and takeaways and, and what we're personally working on to maintain more balance and also just some tips for you to create more balance in this area of your life. Definitely. And something to note, we're not claiming that we have mastered this balance. We are working through all of it. So more of just a discussion, maybe 
hopefully it will help you but sometimes it's just so nice to hear that other people are struggling to find balance and yeah. pick up some tricks along the way and just learn like different perspectives and yeah. we would love to so we're going to start being more active on our Instagram account mm -hmm. um and more so just to hear from you like how you kind of find balance in a certain area of your life and we want each week to have content on our Instagram and TikTok that revolve around the topics of the episode um, yeah. of that week. Yeah, I feel like the best part about listening to a podcast is to hear other people's perspectives and then form your own opinion around it. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you think that's helpful? Do you find something else helpful? Yeah. So like we would love to hear from you and what your thoughts are Absolutely. and if you have any tips or tricks or what your experience is. So Yes. We'll try to be a little more interactive to give you guys some opportunities to share that. But Yes, and for our first episode, or first let's do both topic, we're going to be exploring relationships. And what we mean by that is interpersonal versus intrapersonal. So the relationships you have with other people. Courtney had to give me these definitions before. I did, but I also had to like fact check myself as well to make <laughs> sure that I understood inner versus intra. Because you get them confused sometimes. We're all human. Yes. So interpersonal is like, for example, my relationship with all my friends or with you and intrapersonal is my relationship that I have with myself and kind of balancing the two. So first, let's get into the extremes. First extreme is someone who's going out. Not necessarily, not necessarily going out drinking, but like always has to be talking to someone, always has to be doing something. Plans, 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 yes. like very just nonstop, yes. basically. Super social. Yeah. Nothing wrong with this. Are extroverts out there. Very extroverts. Literally one of my best friends and roommates, she is that girl. She has 5,000 different options every single night of the week and she's out there. She's never in our apartment for the most part. And it's just, it's admirable. I personally could never do that, but that is one extreme. Yep. And then what's the other extreme, Ash? So the other extreme is probably someone that just prefers to spend their alone time. So more calling out our introverts here, ones that don't really care to maybe go out and socialize with large groups of people, staying in by yourself, enjoying that time alone. I feel like a lot of the times people ha are in a relationship sometimes, yeah. and they tend to gravitate towards that one person and spend most if not all of their time and all of their plans kind of revolve around being with either just themselves or that one person yeah so that's another extreme I would say yeah and there are ebbs and flows to this as well yeah um I personally find myself I I would consider myself to have a really great balance of the two not all the time but I've had a conversation with my parents like a couple of months ago, the last time I was home. And for whatever reason, I think I was explaining how like I am always like trying to like grow and like spend time with myself and just learn more and develop like who I am um, because I'm a strong believer in that that then kind of shows in other areas of your life. And I was just having this conversation with them and my dad was like, Court, like that's so funny that you say that or that this still stands true because you've always been like that. And I was like, what? Like, what does that even mean? Like, I felt like I've kind of evolved into this. And as I've gotten older, I've gotten more in tune with myself. But both of my parents agreed and were saying that growing up, like I had a serious boyfriend in high school for like four years. Um, of course, there were times where like I spent a lot of my time with him. But apparently I'd be like, oh my gosh, like I've been spending so much time with him. Like I want to make sure that I spend time with my family, with my friends. And I'm very intentional with ensuring that like the important things and people in my life to get the time and energy that they deserve. That's, and that's so just good. so something that's interesting because apparently ever since I was like, not even in high school, even before then, like mm -hmm. even like in middle school, my parents had seen signs in that. So definitely some nature and nurture and it's evolved as I've gotten older, but just an interesting little little tidbit. Yeah. Would you consider yourself extroverted or introverted? And where on that scale? Because I feel like that obviously tends yeah. to play a large role in this balance between the two. Yeah, I am definitely an extrovert. Um, with that said, I budget time to be an introvert as well. And like sometimes it really when I get into the flow of like really being by myself, for example, in COVID, I think everyone kind of had this realization. Yes. They were forced to be with themselves. Yes. Scary and so people got me. very comfortable. 
people got very comfortable being with themselves and it was hard to kind of crack them out of their shell when the world started opening up again and they could start socializing with people but taking COVID out of the equation yep if I were just kind of in this state of like grinding really working on myself doing whatever like any kind of interruption in that and like getting me out of my house or like starting seeing people again there's some sort of like some like it's hard it's an obstacle to really kickstart that okay. but then once I'm out and I'm finally out there I love every second of it but sometimes even like going out it's like oh, I really don't feel like going out tonight it's like, so crazy I though I really don't because as much as you say that I feel like the second you're out you th- you're thriving yes you're talking to everybody 1, you're out about we always have the best time but it's it is it's just getting yourself it's there. getting yourself out there and I think that's that's kind of with everything on the flip side there are times when I'm like super extroverted. I'm kind of on that high. It's like, think about it when you're out more and you're with people, other plans kind of form when you're out and about and you're doing things. So it's like, Oh my God, I had so much fun. Let's do this again next weekend or let's go here. Let's go there. And then sometimes I like run myself into the ground and I'm on that extroverted high and I'm like, Oh wait, I need to like dial it back. So yes, I can actually focus on like myself and things that I need to be doing and make sure that there is that balance. So to, that was a very long, but way of saying I'm definitely an extrovert but Mm -hmm. it kind of comes and goes there are different things that I do to make sure that there's a balance in between which we'll get into eventually yeah but what how would you consider yourself and your relationship so I don't know I had an identity crisis when COVID hit okay because before I was absolutely extroverted 100% I know for a fact I am an extrovert extrovert because I do get my energy from other people yeah even if I don't want to see people the second I do I just leave that conversation feeling so energized. And I know that's so different for a lot of people. Yeah. A lot of people do tend to get drained, but something about it, I don't know, it energizes me. Um, But so before COVID, I was always out and about making plans when I first moved to Boston. Yeah. Um, It was during COVID, but I hadn't seen people for a while. Yeah. So I was making like plans after plans after plans. And I used to, no joke, be booked out three weeks. Every single night I was doing something. I was go, 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 go. And I was exhausted. It got to the point where I would make all of these plans and I wouldn't even want to go to any of them because it's just too much. I'm like, oh my God, I'm exhausted. I was just out last night. I just saw this person here like sometimes. And then I was like, wow, I really do need to spend time alone. Yeah. So I'm definitely navigating where I fit in between the two. I've dialed it back a lot because I got super, super burnt out in the fall. But I'm not good at spending time alone either, though. So even (laughs) I will try to schedule like a night in by myself because I'm like, nope, I just need to be alone and relax. And I'll have the night. I have no plans. I'm like, well, what am I doing? (laughs) what do I do I don't know how to spend time alone and I constantly either have a podcast going because I like to hear voices in the back I'm calling my family to check in like whenever I find an alone moment I'm like oh time to check in on mom dad grandfather and Morgan let me (laughs) give them a call (laughs) like you know so definitely something I'm navigating so definitely more on the extroverted side of going out a lot but trying to figure that out well I just like to add beforehand that it's so important to have a balance because if you are go, 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 there's going to be a burnout point. And yes. I'll kind of relate this to my life in this current moment. So I just explained I've been literally nonstop because of all of my recent travel. And I, on the plane yesterday, I started thinking about it. I've literally gotten four to five hours of sleep every night for the past like nine days. I don't know how you're because I've been waking up. Well, I thrive in chaos. Number one, <laughs> Facts. I thrive in chaos, <laughs> but I was waking up at 6 a.m. to work on like Eastern Standard Time because I don't know how people live out there full time because by the time they yeah. wake up, most people in the world have been up. Th- there's news circulating. There's like they're three hours behind in just life in general. That's true. And so I hate that. And I'm the type of person that kind of likes to log on early for work. So it's like me logging on on time is already kind of late on that side of the world. So I was waking up at like 6 a.m. to start. And then I was on L.A. time like at night. Like I, it was nice because I got to log off of work early. at like 2 p.m. So nice. But then I was like out and about till like midnight every night and just like did the cycle over and over again anyway. So... I had a conversation with my dad on the way home and I was like, I'm finally like, get, I'm back in Boston. He's like, court, please do me a favor. Take care of yourself 
because this week I'm kind of like, oh, I've been out of my home city. I've been away from my people for like a week now or over a week. And so now it's very easy to hop back into my life and just go to the gym every day and do this and see this person that I haven't seen and do all of these things. But if I were to hit the ground running, how would I catch up? How yeah. would I be able to kind of let my body rest and recharge? You need that recharge time. Yes. So I just think it's important to find balance for both sides. Like if you are someone who stays in and prefers to spend a lot of time with themselves, I think those types of people, me included, you included sometimes, needs to remind themselves that you are a reflection and an embodiment of all the people you interact with, all the content you consume, just any surrounding you put yourself in. That's how you kind of like make up who you are and how you grow as a person. So it's very important to get out there. But also if you're go, 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 you need to make sure that you have enough energy and enough in your cup to then give to others in other areas of your life or other people of your life. Yeah. So I like that a lot. I've never really thought about spending alone time like that when you really need to go out and see other people because that is yeah. how you, that's what shapes you. Exactly. And all of your experiences all are make make up who you are. Yeah. And then definitely the reverse of that. Um, if you're constantly being surrounded by all of these people, how do you decide like what you agree with, like what your opinions are? Yeah. So exactly. There's it's definitely worth it to have a balance. Definitely. Yeah. And Ashley and I kind of put some takeaways and tips together that we haven't shared with one another just yeah. so we could have like this I'm very wondering organic how much, dialogue yeah I'm wondering how much overlap we'll have yeah I'm very curious okay so let's start with for those people that really are go 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 and are social butterflies like there's literally nothing wrong with either extreme but would love for us to share how we kind of find that balance and let's start with the go go goes okay so I have one that I've been trying to implement in my life which is no plan Sundays I love so that. I feel like Sunday is just the perfect reason here we are recording on a Sunday we've had this plan for a week you know <laughs> and, and that's okay like sometimes these there's rules of life but you just have to take like what is appropriate for that week so for me, no plan Sundays is really nice because it's one day of the week that I can just kind of recharge, get set for the week, and I can potentially choose to have plans or I can just spend that alone time and I have a dedicated day for that. Yeah, so it doesn't need to be Sunday, but just like a dedicated time for you to keep it open and something kind of going back to how you originally explained like your perspective and in COVID and when things started to open up, you started planning like every single day yes. and night of the week, like you were booked up months in advance. That's all cute and all, but then it's almost like you're kind of doing what's asked of you in not, you're like overwhelming yourself to kind of yes. make sure that you see the right people in your life and the people that you love and enjoy but at point, it takes a toll on your own, like, personal health and, and your relationship with yourself. And so it's just important to make sure that you have, yeah, that dedicated time where you just, no matter what, it, it could be an hour in your day. It could be whatever. So it doesn't need to be the no plan Sunday, but it could be you're going to fill this day up with what you want to do. And you're going to say no to people when they ask you to kind of do things on this day. Yeah. Unless it's something that you really, really want to do. Yeah, exactly. What do you have? What's next? Okay, so my first tip for someone who is go, go, go all the time is to set 15, set your alarm clock for 15 minutes earlier in the day or go into your bed, like, or your bedroom 15 minutes before you originally planned to go to sleep. And the reason for that is it's such a small adjustment in your day or in your night, but it really does have a profound effect because you get time kind of before other people are awake and people are texting you and people are on social media. It doesn't need to be super early in the morning, but it just allots yourself more time to sit with yourself and your mm. thoughts and, and get your day organized and understand like where your priorities are, what your intentions are. And I have specific tips and tricks to how to utilize that time frame, but we're not going to get into that in this episode because that would become more of a routine topic. Yeah. Um, but just a small change that allows you to have more time for yourself before you're getting pulled in all different directions especially working from home it's so easy for you to just kind of like roll out of bed yes open up your laptop log on for the day 
But if you just 15 minutes earlier, you have some more time for yourself and you refrain. You're, I'm not encouraging you to wake up and 15 minutes earlier and open up your laptop 15 minutes earlier. Right. I'm encouraging you to just kind of sit with yourself during that time. And on the flip side, at night, still just allowing yourself that time to kind of wind down, put your phone across the room. This isn't 15 minutes for you to scroll on TikTok yeah. and do all the all the things. You can still do that, but just a lot that, that time for yourself before you kind of get into your other nightly routine. Um, and just get more in touch with yourself. It doesn't take a lot. And I think when you start that, you're going to fall in love with it. You're going to find something that you do for yourself within that time frame that you love, and it'll be easy to make it consistent in your lifestyle. Yeah, I like that a lot. I don't necessarily wake up or go to bed like with those 15 minutes before, but I did set like a routine where I'm disconnected from my phone. Yeah. Um, so in the morning, I don't look at my phone until after my workout, which is yeah. so nice. And I have the same routine. And again, that is kind of getting into routines, but just having time to yourself in the morning to think. However, I will say... I'm not great at being alone with my thoughts. Again, something yeah. I'm working on. So I tend to literally wake up and put on a podcast, which I think is so toxic. It's That's like the so first interesting. Thing. And having lived with you before, I also see that this this has been a part of your life for a while. I just love the background noise. I love listening to people. I don't know if it's because it's my love for people. Yeah. Or it could be. if it's that I just don't want to think. Am I avoiding something? I don't. Maybe. Yeah, I don't, I don't think so. I just think you like stimulation yeah honestly and I mean that's just like the world we're in today yeah speaking of though I do have an amazing like new Spotify person for you to follow okay I was able to meet a co-worker this past week um someone who's brand new to my team and she just like hopped on the trip it was my first time meeting her her name is Olivia. Shout out her. That's the first Hi, time. Olivia. That's the first time we're saying shout out this episode. And I'm very proud of so myself. So proud. <laughs> we're already improving. So you were saying shout out. I was saying a thousand or a hundred percent. And I literally <laughs> cringed every second. So we're improving. <laughs> um, but back to where I was going with this. She's now a coworker of mine. One of the most special humans I've ever met in my life. I'm so grateful to, to be connected to her through work. But on the side, she's like very low-key but an aspiring dj not like she's working oh. for it but it's just a passion of hers so she curates these playlists for different moods and like vibes i absolutely need that and she has a she has a decent following on spotify too like very impressive and i've listened to like three of her on my six hour travel excursion yesterday yeah i started <laughs> listening to her playlist literally artists i've never heard of in my entire life i never would have found them otherwise I don't think there was a song that I heard out of the hundreds that I listened to that I've disliked. Wow. So, yeah. Okay. So I coming like your that. Way, coming your way. And we'll, we can share it on. You can do both. Yeah. We'll put it on the Instagram. Yes. I would love that. I need to get back into music because yes. ever since I've discovered podcasts, it's all I listen to. Yes. Well, it's hard. It's hard to discover new music. It is. Like Spotify's algorithm. I, I used to love the Discover Weeklies and like the release radars. And I don't know if it's just like the quality of music that's been coming out or the yeah. gap in the algorithm, but I have not organically found new music and, or new artists mm -hmm. in so long. Same. So this will help. Yeah. Okay. I love that. Yes. I'm really excited you're, to no, listen. You're going to be obsessed. I already know. Okay. Oh, amazing. Okay. Next one. Rather than making plans with other people, make plans with yourself. So intentionally, not only, okay, I'm going to spend time alone tonight, but it's like, okay, tonight I'm going to clean out my closet. I'm going to go through all the clothes that I want to get rid of, rid of tonight. I'm going to get all of my laundry done. And this maybe will apply to some people, but it especially applies to me because I'm just so productivity driven. Yeah. So if I, again, if I just have no plans and I sit alone, I'm like, well, what am I doing? I could be doing so many other things. Yeah. But if I'm saying, okay, tonight I'm going to rearrange my room. I'm going to get my laundry done. I'm going to deep clean my room. I'm going to go through my closet. It's just really nice. Even if it's just watching that show yeah. that you really wanted to watch. Yeah. But making a specific outline for time with yourself makes it a lot easier. I love that. And that kind of goes along with my point. It's almost the same kind of worded differently, but like, Find things that you genuinely enjoy doing. So this could be trial and error. Like this could be literally doing a puzzle. This could be journaling. This could be doing laundry. This could be watching your favorite show like <laughs> you just mentioned. But like exploring, kind of like going out of your comfort zone a little bit to find something that you enjoy doing. It could be going to a pottery class. It could be literally 
journaling or just like whatever it may be if this is something it will take trial and error but if you find something you genuinely enjoy that you do by yourself then it's not going to be that other thing that you have to do it's just going to be something that you eventually integrate into your routine it could be going to the gym it could be literally anything it could be driving an extra 20 minutes in the morning to go get coffee just that you have that time in the car by yourself yeah well alex um she loves doing this she's queen of spending time by herself who is alex alex true alex yeah. <laughs> okay i don't okay. know if we should be using last names or not but no, alex we, don't, we, we don't need to okay um she found that she loves picnics so she takes herself on picnics and she just whether it's reading or bringing some picnic snacks or whatever it is but she'll just go to all of these different areas and take herself on a picnic i love that that's adorable yeah and like that's also something she does with other people like she'll be like hey going on a picnic today do you want to come and i'm like hell yeah i do that's amazing. So it's something that she enjoys doing alone and with others. And yeah. So if anyone has any suggestions. Yeah. I'm looking for something that I enjoy. That kind of reminds me of something that I've been meaning to do. I just like haven't had the opportunity yet. I want to take myself out to dinner. Like I've been wanting to do this for so my long. My dad does this all the time. He just goes, he sits down at a bar and he orders like apps and a couple beers and there's times where he just goes and he's just like chilling and by himself. And then there's other times where he's meeting people through that and like yeah. you just never know. And I think the reason why I haven't yet is because I want to find like the right environment. I think it could be, it's a little, it's out of your comfort zone for sure. Like it people is. are going to look at you, not that you should care what other people think, but people are going to be like, did she just get stood up? Like that's like I the know. last thing I would want people to think. But like, I would love to find like a very like vibey, place with a great ambiance and just like sit at the bar and like yep. make a bartender friend and mm-hmm. just like eat and drink what I enjoy and just allow myself that time I love that I ever since we lived in the north end I would walk back from my internship which was in seaport to the north end and I would walk through all these beautiful Italian restaurants and I'm like oh I'm going to take myself to a bar I'm gonna get a book and I'm gonna read and have a nice Italian dinner with a glass of wine and I've never done it we're going on three years like why why have we not done these things and I feel like other people will be able to relate because I didn't know that was something that you yeah you had been wanting to do as well you know but people have hot takes on this why let us know your hot take but people are always like that's forking weird (laughs) or they're like oh my god I love it so much like, I think I've brought this up to Joe before, and he's like, why would you do that? <laughs> Just don't, why, I, I don't know. People when think it's weird. Whenever I've seen women do this, mm-hmm. like, who knows if, like, they're intentionally by themselves, but I'm like, you're a bad bleeping yes! bee. Yes. Like, go you. Absolutely. Yeah, I don't know. So maybe I agree. that's something, maybe that's my focus of this next week. Yeah, take ourselves <laughs> on dates. I love that. Yeah. So now for those who stay in, let's address those people who really just prefer to be by themselves. It takes a little bit more for them to kind of get out of their shell and just get out with people and do things outside of their their comfort zone. Let's give some tips there. Okay, so my first one is I do this a lot because, like I said before, I used to schedule like a million plans in and then I would get overwhelmed because it's like, oh my God, I have this and then I have this tomorrow. Like it's just too much and then I don't even enjoy my plans. So setting time limits. Yeah. I actually did this last week um, because I really wanted to catch up with one of my friends and we wanted to grab lunch. And it was during a work day. So it was like, okay, I'm free from 12 to 1, but like I do have an end end time to this meetup and there's like a start time but we also get to spend that full hour together catch up spend time but you know when it's going to end and you don't have to be worried about all these other plans I love that because then that just prevents you from just like spending too much time and energy on one specific thing when you are someone who needs who has a lot going on in your life yeah So I think specific times also help because like the other weekend I was going to go over to make plans for I'm going to Mardi Gras in a couple weeks in New Orleans. Um, So exciting. Yeah, there'll be a lot of story times from that. Um, But we needed to make a bunch of reservations and we never said a bunch a, a strict set time. So I just took it upon myself and I was like, hey, guys, I have to be done by 2 p.m. 
but like so i'm just gonna head over now we're gonna meet up and talk but just so you know like i'm leaving at two and they were like they respected that they have no problem with that they were like okay perfect that sounds great and then it allowed me to like go on with my day my number one tip for those who stay in kind of similar to the last tip that i talked about and finding things that you genuinely enjoy but like find the things and people and activities that get you excited about going out and don't feel the pressure of other people. Like just know that you can kind of say no and decide what you want to put your time and energy towards. So going out doesn't need to be going out and drinking your face off and staying out till 2 a.m. And you can incorporate this tip too. It's like, I want to go out. I want to go out to dinner, but I don't necessarily want to go out to like the after party or like whatever is going on afterwards. Or I want to go out, but I want to leave by 12 Um, and in other areas not pertaining to going out. It's like I want to go out and I want to sit at a cafe and do work and potentially like meet someone who's doing the same. Yep. Or just find things that excite you so that it's not always like, oh, crap, like I have to get out and do something. It's like you find the people that you want to spend time with um, in the areas in which you want to kind of go in or try something new or get get yourself excited about the place or thing or person that you're going to be spending your energy on. Yeah, I think making plans to do something that you genuinely really want to do don't say oh shoot I really need to see this person what can we do like maybe I'll just go along with their plans like no No. pick something that's really interesting to you and then invite a person on and then you'll be excited about just that plan in general exactly I like that a lot I think working out with a friend is a really good way to catch up with somebody yeah I did this like the other weekend um I personally love working out i work out almost every day it's found so it's just a nice little headspace and doing a workout class you can be in your head and enjoy that time and it's almost like that sacred time but you're sharing it with somebody else wait I love that I love that so that's one way of kind of incorporating something that you already do in your lifestyle yeah it's already on your to-do list it's already something that you're excited about and then inviting that person or whoever you want to really come with you and you can experience that together Yeah, it's easy time together. Yeah. So it's not like this additional thing that you're adding to your to your to do list or your your daily activities. Yeah. It's honestly just incorporating other people into your schedule. Yeah. Which is great. For sure. So I'm actually reading a book right now called Atomic Habits. It's by James Clear. I ordered this as soon as you mentioned it. I haven't read it yet. Yeah, I'm still like not even halfway through it yet, but it's about allowing yourself to make or break habits and like how you can form baby steps that ladder up to your overarching goals and actually achieve the things that you want to um and there's four different parts of kind of like ingraining a habit like into your routine but one of them is like making it super easy and making it very like um very it's not like you're trying to eliminate the barriers or the obstacles that allow you to kind of take this first step. And so sometimes that barrier or obstacle, if you are someone that's staying in is like going out of your, of your daily routine to do something that takes you out of your comfort zone already. And then you involve people into it. So that's like two steps that you need to do in order to make this a habit. So what you just explained in, already just going to a gym class that you were going to and inviting that person it's like kills two birds with one stone I have a tip that I actually cannot say that was mine to begin with and it's something that I haven't done yet but I'm super excited to try in my life um this was actually shared by Cam in a Sunday setup episode or not episode but session um and she she shared that she's been having daily dares oh yes wait I loved this what you have to do it could be literally anything it's you when you wake up in the morning or before you go to bed at night you set a dare for your day so it could be something like I dare myself to reach out to someone that I haven't reached out to in a while or I dare myself to try a new coffee shop and I think it's just like the psychology of like 
I dared myself like I have to do it like yeah. triple dog dare it makes it fun <laughs> yeah and it's just like it makes it not something that you have to do yeah but it's like you get to do this thing and you're it's just a way for you to kind of get out of your comfort zone or try something new I forgot about that right yeah I, I think that's that. so cute I'm gonna start daring myself what should I dare mm-hmm. myself this week um well I I want to hear about taking yourself on a date so okay. maybe you should dare yourself dare to take, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to dare myself to take myself on a date. Okay, perfect. I love that. We'll be reporting back. Okay, another one if you're trying to work on those relationships with others, I have is FaceTime dates. So if you find yourself just staying in a lot, not wanting to go out, it's just a little too much to make plans with somebody, yeah. set aside a time to FaceTime and catch up. Because it doesn't always have to be about going out and being social in person. Like we spent so much of this time now with COVID online and yeah. using our phones and technology. So catch up with somebody over the phone and like schedule that time in as well. I love that. I need to do that more. Yeah, I do t- I'm really, really bad with maintaining relationships that are not convenient <laughs> in my <laughs> at area. You're, at least you're self aware. Yeah. It's something I need to work on and I'm so thankful for my friends that are really good. At maintaining relationships yeah. when you don't see each other I would say we're both not great no <laughs> or at least like with each other like we if we're not in the same area you know we'll interact a little bit but yeah we're, we're not really setting aside time it's just hard when you're so busy yeah and know. honestly that brings me to a point that I wanted to make in kind of just explaining how to maintain balance mm-hmm so I think this would be a great time to move into like tips. Are you are you okay with that? Yeah. Do you have other I'm, tips? I'm I only have overarching ones now. Perfect. So aside from tips from the two different extremes, we wanted to talk about just like tips that really apply to both extremes and help you create this balance in the relationship part of your life. So my number one tip is to set boundaries. And what I mean by that is be very transparent with the ways in which you operate and value value your alone time versus your social time so that you're not letting other people down or you're not kind of making people feel bad or make it feel like it's something against them personally as to why you're not necessarily answering their text right away or why you're not seeing them all the time you need to understand that everyone kind of views their relationships and their alone time versus uh, interpersonal time differently yep um so really to to set boundaries I'll give you an example Ashley mentioned previously that I am not a good texter so if a new person in my life enters the chat (laughs) um I literally set the tone at the top I'm like look I take my time and energy like very strategically I it's very precious to me please do not be offended if I don't answer you right away promise you it's nothing about you I'll get to it and even if I don't say that sometimes that's not always necessary but if someone texts me I'll literally respond with a voice memo and I'll be like hey like I'm at work or I'm doing something right now I just think this is going to be way more time efficient so and then I just address their text or their concern through that or I'll pick up the phone and I'll FaceTime them so that gets them understanding that like it's nothing against them this is the boundary that I've set for myself I cannot texting takes a lot of time it does I hate so it's not like I can't just answer no matter what point in the day and and some people are that type of person that answers no matter what so yeah set that boundary and ensure that people know in your life kind of how you are in that in that way I think boundaries are so important I definitely need to work on boundary setting for sure but just sharing that expectation so you know what others can expect from you and what you can expect from others is just so important when you're building relationships absolutely I have one kind of similar um like no guilt plans is what I wrote down so like be upfront and just share how you're feeling so tell people when you're not up for a social like just be set those expectations that you are comfortable sharing there's been a couple times when again I was just booked a little too busy and I was like I'm not having a good day like I'm not going to be the person I want to be for you in our time and it's not going to be enjoyable for either one so I will just text and be like listen I hate to cancel but I need a mental health day I need a little alone time yeah and anyone who understands that boundary that you've set with them and that expectation is yeah they they want you to be your best self of course so I think it's important to share how you're feeling and I don't know don't feel guilty about canceling plans and don't feel like you have to go somewhere if you don't want to go there yeah 
And that leads very seamlessly into my next <laughs> step, which is say no. Yes. Say no. Like the people in your life that are meant to be in your life and are the right people that you surround yourself with are going to understand when you need to take a mental health day. And like you don't need to make everybody happy. People are going to understand as long as you're transparent that it's nothing against them. It's what you need to do to protect yourself and ensure that you can not burn yourself out. Yeah, I agree. I think saying no and boundaries have a lot in common because you have to set the boundary and expectation with others that it's okay to say no. Exactly. There's been a lot of times and I've been on the other end where someone says no to going out and I will harass them until yeah. they say yes. Everybody has those friends. Yes. Of course, it's so like, much fun to have all of your people with of you. Of course. But also you have to be able to respect when somebody says no. Yeah. So that you can also say no. Absolutely. Yeah. I like that a lot. So yeah. one more quick one. I think you guys have probably gathered this, but don't schedule a bunch of plans so another kind of tip I have is I try to leave I don't know if I already said this I try to leave one night of the weekend with no plans up for spontaneity so I can be spontaneous so whether it's oh I am actually feeling like I need a night in or Courtney texts me and asks if I want to go sit courtside at the Celtics (laughs) game and if I had planned out my whole week I would have had say no yeah and I really think spontaneous plans are the best plans because they're plans that you make in the moment that you actually want to do yeah and that relates in every which aspect of your life well I don't have any other tips I feel like I feel like we gave a certain number of tips that were they were related to one another and they like flowed very seamlessly but people can do what they want with them and they can apply them to different parts of their lives yeah and then another reminder those are from court and i's perspectives yeah we're different than you are and we are different from each other so there are things that will work things that don't work but this podcast is called you can do both not because yeah. we know how to do both no. we want to do both <laughs> we're trying to yeah we're, tr- we're trying to figure out a way that we we can do a little bit of everything exactly exactly i couldn't have said it better myself <laughs> should oh. we get into focuses of the week <laughs> yes i need to do a little brainstorm but okay you go first what is your focus of the week okay so kind of in theme with this episode I am allowing myself to rest and recharge and not just hit the ground running into my normal routine in Boston, considering I've been on the go for the past week and a half. Um, And with that, something that I really am trying to incorporate is time blocking. I've tried it before in at a very granular level. So if anyone who doesn't know what time blocking is, it's literally putting your time in your calendar and blocking off like an hour or two or whatever it is for specific activities. So as soon as the the two o'clock mark hits, you're on to the next activity, no matter where you are in the process or the progress of that specific thing. But what I'm trying to do this week is I'm going to devote different days to different things in my life. So on Monday, I'm going to focus on Cozy, which is a side Instagram account that I have that I love, but has been on the back burner for the past couple weeks. Yeah, if you don't follow Cozy, you're doing it wrong. (laughs) K-O-Z-I-E-B-B. That was so cute. (laughs) We are so cute. But yeah, so setting a day for Cozy, setting a day for you can do both content, setting a day for different areas of my life, because what I've found and what I've become more self-aware of is I thrive in chaos, as you know. So every day I try to do a little bit of everything. But yeah. when I do that, nothing really gets accomplished. No specific like activity or to-do gets accomplished because I'm like in the progress of so many different things. I think that's a productivity like fact. Yeah. You're always more productive when you're working on one thing at a time yeah. and you can dedicate a larger amount of time to that. Yeah. And there's an episode that I haven't had the chance to listen to yet on Ed Milet's podcast that was titled like monotasking. And mm. I'm pretty sure it speaks to that point. So I'm going to listen to that this week and hopefully that'll kickstart me into really dedicating a day to do one particular thing and checking that off as I go. Mm. So that is my focus. Yeah. And what is yours? Um... Well, after just talking about all these relationships now, I think my focus is I want to spend a little more time calling my family this week. Also, I would like to include a dare of the day. Okay, let's do it. Oh, I don't know if I have one specifically, but like each day I (laughs) want to do a dare of the day. I'll do the same dare. Oh, maybe. Well, I'll post each day on the you can do both 
and I'll just Yay. share my dare and you guys can play along. Wait, that's so fun. Should okay. I do the same? Oh, yeah. well, my, my focus of the week. I'm going to take myself out on a date and report back. Okay, perfect. Wow. I'm so excited. All right. If you guys made it this far, thank you so much for listening. Again. Seriously. Again. We're, we're having so much fun yeah, with this. And we're just like, so excited. We really are. We're, we're open to constructive feedback. Yes. My cousin reached out to me and said that he was listening with his AirPods in. And the intro, outro music <laughs> literally almost blew his eardrums. <laughs> so it could literally be as like tactical and granular as that. Yeah. Like we're learning as we go. And we're just happy that someone is listening. Yeah. So thanks for being patient with us. Yeah. And with that, be sure to tune in throughout the week on our Instagram and TikTok. And so you can follow us at You Can Do Both Pod on Instagram. And you can do both on TikTok. And then our personals at Court Carlton. Two, Two T's. T's. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> I love it. Two T's. And then mine is at It's Ashley Paul, I T S, Ashley Paul Amazing. on Instagram. Okay, talk to you guys next week. Have a great week.